said, we got work to do, but tonight we're going to have some fun, and then tomorrow we're just going to get right back to it. So join me in toasting my wife. Not only was the vice president there, we had the second gentleman, and then Governor Waltz and Gwen Waltz. It was such an electrifying environment. I had a private moment with her. She held my hand lovingly, as always. I love this woman beyond words. It was just a fantastic night. The entire night it was a coup d'etat. She scored every single point she needed to. She hit all her marks. It just was a completely well-orchestrated and well-oiled operation tonight. I Kudos to the entire Democratic Party. And uh, frankly, kudos to America and the world. Now, you're, it's fair to say, part of a friendly crowd for Kamala Harris in that room. You're, you know, you're someone who's raising money for her campaign. You're one of the delegates from Pennsylvania. Talk to me about how Kamala Harris is going to sell her message to those who mightn't be as welcoming or as open to it as you are. I think what she did tonight was a clear overture to, for example, moderate Republicans, independents. She had Adam Kinzinger, who co-chaired the January 6th committee, speaking tonight. Not only did he speak tonight, he was towards the end, which is one of the most prominent slots anyone could ever get. And so she's clearly reaching out to all of America, not just blue America, but to red America, to purple America, to show them she is ready to lead, regardless of party affiliation. And there are a number of things that she's already doing. For example, she backed away from her fracking ban. Um, she's going to um, strengthen her position on border to stress that, yes, we welcome immigration, but at the same time, we should not have porous borders. So she's doing a number of things that tells me that she's clearly listening and doing everything she can to bridge the uh, uh, political and partisan divide. When, when you're you know, campaigning, what concerns do you hear about Kamala Harris that perhaps she may have addressed tonight or, or what issues are you looking to hear more from her on? Hey, you're going to think I'm some sort of propaganda minister. I want to say, first of all, I'm not on her payroll, but I will say one thing. Everywhere I go, the energy and enthusiasm for her have been incredible. Even just people on the street or people in my building that I casually talk with, you know, people who are diehard Republicans saying, huh, I am willing to give Coach Walls, I'm willing to give Kamala Harris a second chance. And, um, you know, a lot of times the right wing propaganda engineered a version of Kamala Harris that was that is completely detached from reality. And she is once again reintroducing her to America to, as a seasoned prosecutor, as someone who is the law and order candidate, someone who reveres the rule of law, as opposed to the convicted felon who was charged 88 times. Um, with crimes in four different jurisdictions. How does Kamala Harris keep up the momentum that started in Chicago? There's both a long way and not that much time to go until voting day. There's a couple of big hurdles to overcome, including the debates with Donald Trump. In my own hometown, Philadelphia, I plan to be there. So I'm excited for that. Um, I will say that the shortened campaign schedule might be a blessing in disguise because, frankly, she doesn't need to sustain the momentum for that long. I personally think she will, but she doesn't need to. It's only just 70 some days. And she's going to make every single day, day count. She's going to emphasize a blue wall, Wisconsin, Michigan, my own state, Pennsylvania. She's going to be there every day. In fact, they're just going to park themselves in these states and President Biden. Don't forget that President Biden is a formidable weapon in a state like Pennsylvania, whom he, he considers Pennsylvania to be his home state. So he's going to be there aggressively making the case, especially with demographics that um, really love him, like um, senior citizens and um, older Americans. So I'm really excited for the next seven days. I know that she will be forcefully and tirelessly litigating the case against Donald Trump. Talk to me about the, the fundraising efforts. What sort of interest are you seeing coming to the campaign now? And, and have you been speaking to any of those key donors during this event? And what's their take on it? Well, first of all, I am a key donor. <laughs> And my friends are also key donors. And I think interest is the mildest way we can describe what is going on right now, because what is happening is not interest. What's percolating from the American people is just undeniable passion. They are so excited about her candidate. They know they have renewed faith that she can effectively prosecute the case against her opponent. They're relieved um, to have a different candidate. America breathed a huge sigh of relief on July 21st. I want to say that I love President Biden. He's a fundamentally good man. I have undying respect for him, but he did the right thing by stepping aside. And when he did that, America 
was given a new lease on life, so to speak. So, you know, the excitement is going to carry for the next 70 days. I am I would bet on that. And it also must, because we simply cannot afford another four years of Donald Trump, because it's not going to be another four years. The damage that he would cause would endure for years, decades, and perhaps even centuries. Lindy, we did see protests in Chicago over the Democratic Party's position on the war in Gaza. Were you satisfied by what you heard from Kamala Harris? Do you think that what she said will help to allay some of the concerns that supporters have? I do. And I think it's not only what she said tonight, but what she's been doing. She's been inviting these protesters to meet with her at rallies, to engage with her. They're going to sit down with her campaign staffers and her official staff. She has two teams and to just hear their concerns. And it's not just going to be about lip service. She is committed to ending the atrocities in Gaza. She is calling them atrocities. That in itself is a momentous thing because President Biden was very careful not to use such language, and she did. So that is, there is daylight between her and President Biden on the issue of Gaza. Lindy, before we let you go, we've watched this event over the past few days. Can you describe what it was like being in that conference hall tonight? Well, I just want to say for most of the week, I was on the floor in the very front row of history because Pennsylvania, I'm obviously biased, is the tipping point state. We were placed in the very front to sit there in front of the stage watching people like Barack Obama and Oprah and President Biden. Wow, I am an, I am an immigrant. I, I found myself like welling up in tears. Um, it is It was such a blessing to be there. Being American is the greatest thing that's ever happened to me. And this week was yet another reminder of our country's promise in that our best days still lie, still definitely staunchly, undeniably, they still lie ahead.